Welcome back to Minimum Grain Per Pound Part 2. So before I begin, please like and subscribe to help our channel grow. A very quick recap of what I spoke in Part 1, the definition of grain per pound, which is very simple, the arrow weight in grains divided by the bowl poundage at full draw, and I also talked about uh, things that don't really matter to the arrow weight, such as the point weight, the shaft spine, and the shaft grain per inch. Uh, the only thing that really matters for the arrow weight is how much it weighs when you put the entire arrow on a grain scale. That's it, the final arrow weight. And then also uh, for the bow poundage, various reasons why the bow poundage may not be what is rated. Uh, it's also it's possible to be both higher or lower than what is stated. As a result, when you make prediction, you, you make calculation of the bow poundage, you need to include margin of error because uh, if you underestimate, it is bad for your bow. So it's better to be overestimating rather than underestimating. Uh, so now I'm going to go into the second part, the correct way to measure the bow's poundage. This is a mistake that a lot of people make, including experienced archers. So most of the time, the way that they measure the poundage, first you have to mark your draw length. They will pull the string back with an arrow, and then they will mark somewhere on the arrow to determine their draw length. For example, let's for simplicity, let's agree that we're going to mark it at the belly side of the bow. So the draw length in this example here would be from the knock groove of the arrow to the belly of the bow. But there is a problem because our thumb actually draws slightly further behind the arrow. Okay, this is the maximum draw length where it's supported by our thumb. We are holding it back. The arrow sits above our thumb and therefore this distance L here, which represents the draw length, is actually shorter than our actual draw length. And the difference is, let's label it as X, which is the, dis the, the distance between the arrow knock groove and the actual string position. Okay, There's going to be a distance there in which X is not zero. X is a positive number. However, after we have drawn the bow and marked the arrow length, when we check for the uh, bow's poundage, this is where a lot of people make a mistake. They will first measure that length L. Let's say this, okay, it's L here, right? So they would use a bow scale, they will use a bow scale and pull the distance L. I think it's quite obvious now that they are making a mistake, right? Because you are checking the poundage at, at the length L, but you are actually drawing X plus L. So you are checking the poundage at a shorter length and assume that lower poundage there is the actual poundage you're actually drawing. But it's not. You are drawing a larger draw length because if X is not zero, then L plus X is greater than L. Okay, the draw length here is greater than the draw length that you actually measure. As a result of this, the, the person who make this measurement, they assume the draw length is L, but in actual, it is L plus X, and therefore they underestimated the real poundage. So in such a case, if you do not have a margin of error in your grain per pound, you are actually shooting below the minimum grain per pound because this distance here can be substantial depending on the length of your bow. For a bow that is very long, because the string angle is fairly straight, it is not very acute, it's not very sharp. As a result, this distance x here is smaller. But the shorter the bow is, the more acute this angle is, the more sharp it is. And therefore, this length here can be quite large. Uh, it would range somewhere between half an inch to almost an inch. Now, let's dive in into the minimum grain per pound. It is actually a tug of war between the energy storage versus cast efficiency. 
the greater the energy storage, the higher the grid per pound it requires to transfer that energy into its arrow. But on the other hand, the greater the cast efficiency, the more it can transfer that energy to its arrow and therefore it can tolerate lower grain per pound. These two factors are affected by the sear size, whether it has no sear, it has a small sear, it has a long sear or a large sear, the bow size, whether it's a small bow, a medium sized bow or a large bow, and its construction, whether it is a natural bow such as horn bows, uh, bamboo bows, wood bows, fiberglass bow, and also laminated bows. It depends on the, con the construction. The purpose of the minimum grain per pound is really simple. It is just to maintain sufficient, okay, sufficient efficiency so that the residual energy does not damage the bow. So over here, I have a very simple chart to illustrate what I try to, to point out. Let's, okay, on, on this axis here is the grain per pound and this axis here is the efficiency. So let's first assume that we are using a very, very high grain per pound. So high that it reaches peak efficiency. Okay, And initially, as we reduce the grain per pound that we use, we will actually see a drop in efficiency. However, for a big change in grain per pound, you only have a very, very small change in the efficiency. Since you are losing efficiency, you also gain a little bit more hand shot. Plus, you will also gain arrow speed, reasonable amount of arrow speed. So you gain range, okay? Your, your shooting range will increase. Your trajectory is flatter. So initially, at this point that is above the minimum grain per pound, it makes sense for you to cut down on the grain per pound that you use because now you can, you can cut down a lot of the arrow weight you only lose a small efficiency, you gain a little bit of hand shock, but you gain in speed. It makes sense. This is a good trade-off. But once you pass the minimum grain per pound, what you experience is, for a small drop in grain per pound, there is a large drop. You can see this very steep pipe here. This is flat, this is steep. A small change in grain per pound, you will have a large change in efficiency. You, you lose a lot of efficiency, and therefore, once you pass that point, you suddenly feel that there's a substantial increase in hand shock because there's a significant gain in the residual energy or the hand shock. Uh, it's, it's interchangeable because the residual energy directly brings the hand shock. Also, you will find that the arrow speed does not change much. It remains fairly the same and that's, the, that's because once you go below the minimum grain per pound, the bow is closer to its dry fire speed. Okay, the dry fire speed is basically if you're not shooting with any arrow, you have zero grain per pound, that's the maximum speed that the bow can launch. And the, the, the lower the grain per pound you use, the closer you are to its maximum speed, which is the dry fire speed. And when you are closer to this maximum speed, the gain is going to be very, very small, very minimal. So for a small change in grain per pound, you lose a lot of efficiency, you gain a lot of hand shot, but you don't really gain too much in arrow speed. So this is a bad trade-off. It doesn't make sense. It is a bad trade-off. On this side, where it's higher than the minimum grain per pound, it's a good trade-off, but once it's below, it's a bad trade-off. We can also look at it from a bow failure point of view. Let's begin with, let's assume we're going to use a very high grain per pound initially. So initially when we lower our grain per pound, you'll find that this part here is fairly flat. So the rate of failure does not increase substantially. So it makes sense that you use a lower arrow weight, get, get some arrow speed, and it doesn't affect your, your bow's durability that much. However, once you go below the minimum grain per pound, this part is very steep. You have a very sudden increase in the rate of failure. So it makes sense to use arrows on this side, which is higher than the minimum grain per pound. 
and it is a bad trade-off for anything below the minimum grain per pound. From this, from what I explained over here, it makes sense that if we were to include some margin of error, because this, this kind of underestimation can happen, we want to have some margin of error. And once we include this margin of error, it only makes sense to us to use anything above the minimum grain per pound and not anything lower. So what if you use arrows below the minimum grain per pound required by the buyer or the seller? Well, you void the warranty. And I'm going to give you an analogy why it is. So let's say you bought a new car and the car is rated to a certain octane rating. Let's say it's RON 95 in my country, that would be the regular. So if you're going to fill this car up with a RON 97, what's going to happen? Well, it's fine. There's no problem if you use above the minimum speci uh, specifications. But if you're going to fill up with a RON 91 below the minimum specifications, or if you're going to fill up with diesel, the car is not going to work. Okay, something's going to break down. And when it breaks, can you claim warranty? No, right? Because this is outright from your own stupidity. So you cannot claim warranty for things that you damage it out of your own stupidity. And that's the same as uh, for arrows. So let's do a case study here. Uh, assuming you have a bow that is a 40 pound at 28 inch, you draw 30 inches. You cannot assume it's 40 pounds, it's going to be higher. So let's say it's 45 pounds at 30 inches. And the bow requires a minimum of 10 grain per pound, just, just for example. If you use 29.2 grams or equivalent of uh, 450 grains, that gives you 10 grain per pound, which is fine. This is absolutely okay. That's, that's exactly the minimum. So you'll be fine. If you use 27 grams, which is 417 grains, that gives you something like 9.3 grain per pound. This, without a doubt, is going to void your warranty because it's below the minimum grain per pound, right? So the question is, if you use something like 28 grams, which is 432 grains, that gives you 9.6 grain per pound. Is it okay? Or is it a void of warranty? The answer depends on the seller or the buyer. For me, I have certain condition in which I would accept. And that brings us to the next topic, the minimum grain per pound guideline. So over here, uh, this one here is the seer, whether it has no seer, small seer, long seer, or the large seer. Okay, no seers are both like the Olympic recurve. They have working uh, working limbs, so the working tips, so it doesn't have a sear. Um, small sears are like, for example, the Turkish bow, the Tatar bow, uh, the Ming bows are considered as uh, okay, the Ming Xiao Shao are considered small bows, a uh, small sear bows. The long sears are like the Han bows, uh, and the large sears are, for example, Manchu bow. And these are the bow size, okay. Small, I would consider a bow is small if it's below 52 inch strung from tip to tip. The large one would be anything above 58 inches and anything in between would be a medium size. So there you have the chart. A bow without sear, I would consider 9 grain per pound to be just enough for a small bow. And as the bow size increase, you can see that I require a higher grain per pound. I increase by one for, for the, as you increase the size. Small seer starts from 10. So this will be, for example, a Turkish bow, a Tatar bow, a small bow plus a small seer. I will start with 10 grain per pound. And if the size increases, the, the grain per pound also increase. For long seer, it's quite rare to see the small size. So I would say they start from here. Uh, a long sear bow with a medium size, I would say that 12 grain per pound would be ideal. And uh, anything larger would require 13. Large sears such as the Manchu, well, I've not seen a small one, but uh, theoretically that would be the number. Uh, 
the Qinghai version, the shorter version, you can use 14 grain per pound, and the large version, the full scale Manchu bowl, I recommend 15. These are for laminated bowls, okay? Laminated bowls. If you use fiberglass bowl, because of its construction, it is almost indestructible. It is not completely indestructible, but uh, it has a very high durability, so it, it can withstand a lower grain per pound. So in the case of a solid fiberglass bowl, I would reduce this number by 20%. A natural bowl, such as horn bowl or bamboo bowl, uh, I would also reduce the minimum required grain per pound by 20%. And if the bow stacks, okay, if the bow stacks, I will reduce by 10%. Because a stacking bow actually has a low energy storage. So because it has low energy storage, it cannot cast arrows very fast. So uh, you don't need as high grain per pound to absorb that amount of energy storage. You can get away with a lower arrow weight. Uh, Example, Korean bows. A lot of people thought Korean bows are smooth. No. Korean bows stacks. Stacks badly. So, you can use lower grain per pound on Korean bows. Okay, because they actually stack. Look at the force draw curve. They stack. Um, so, I'm going to give you some example of the bows that I personally use. Uh, for example, let's look at this one. This, this is the Manchu bow, the Qing Dragon 2, this is the Manchu bow. So pairing with this one, I actually use very heavy arrows. This one here, which is uh, 43 grams. Uh, because at my full draw, that's going to be 43 pounds. So I'm using somewhere around 15 grain per pound for my setup. And my bow, this one is uh, from 2016 until now. It's fine. Uh, it doesn't break my bow. Uh, another one, um, let's see, this one. This bow, the um, a Spearman Emperor bow, it has a long sear. I consider this to be a long sear bow. You can see the size of the sears. It starts from here, so that's very long, right? Um, so this bow here is a 34 pound. Uh, at my full draw, it gives me something like 35, 36 pounds. Um, I use 27 grams arrows and that puts me around 12 grain per pound because this is a long sear bow, a medium size, so 12 grain per pound. And see, this one I've been using it since um, 2018, until now. Um, the arrows that I usually use with this bow, this one here. And then the next one, maybe I'm going to show, oh, this one, this one from Navalny. Uh, Lucas Navalny. It's a Turkish monolith bow. Uh, this one here is a small sear bow. You can see Turkish are small sear bows and it's not a very large bow. This only the length tip to tip strung is something like 48 inches. So that falls under this one, right? Small bow, small sear. So I use a 10 grain per pound on this one. Uh, I have owned this bow since two years ago, uh, 2019 until now. Um, let's see, okay. Natural bow, okay, natural bow. So, this one is a very large bow, uh, so definitely will be here, but it has, I will consider a small sear, so that will be 12, right? But because it's natural bow, I will subtract 20%, so that will give me, the minimum is somewhere at 9.6, 9.6, uh, I just round it to 10. So uh, the lowest arrow weight I use with this one is 10 grain per pound, but usually I use 12. Um, I just like it heavier, uh, it's more comfortable, but if I need to shoot further distance, I will use as low as 10, um, which is this arrow here. Uh, I'll be talking about these arrows later, because it's actually a really, really good arrows. Um, another one, yeah, I'm showing all my collection. So uh, another one, bamboo bow. This is a uh, both side bamboo. Okay, just now the other one was a bamboo wood. This is a both side bamboo. So same thing, small sear, 
large both exactly in the same condition. So subtract 20% minimum is 10. Okay, so I use the same arrow as the other bow. Uh, 10 grams per pound. This bow has been with me since uh, 2018. No problem. Um, as long as you follow this guideline, your bow will last, assuming there's no defect. Okay, if there is a defect in the bow, that's a different story. Okay, let me put this aside. Okay, so uh, there are actually some tolerance. There is some tolerance. Okay, why I'm saying this? So, um, do you have to follow this precisely? Okay, well, the answer is not exactly. I do actually allow some tolerance provided that you follow some requirement. That is, you must actually have at least sufficient aerospine because if your aerospine is way too weak, too soft, the bow cannot transfer its energy efficiently to the arrow because the arrow is going to wiggle all the way. So if the arrow is stiff enough, it can take the thrust from the string without wiggling much and therefore it has an efficient energy transfer. In that case, I'll give it some exception. I will allow a 0 0.5 grain per pound below my minimum. So for example, if you use a correct arrow spine, sufficiently stiff, it don't have to be overly stiff, but sufficiently stiff, I would accept, for example, in, in this case, if it's a 10 for a minimum, I would accept as low as 9.5. This one, I will accept 10.5 and so on. So you subtract 0 0.5, that's the, the minimum if you have sufficient arrow spine. So that leads us back to this case here, 9.6 grain per pound. Is it okay or not? Well, we look at the poundage at your full draw, it's 45 pound. So for 45 pound, I would recommend 500 spine for a sufficiently efficient energy transfer. So if you have 500 spine, 400 spine, anything stiff, that would be sufficiently efficient and therefore I will accept this 9.6 because it's within my 0 0.5 grain per pound tolerance. However, if you are using 600 spine, the energy transfer is not as efficient. So when you combine an inefficient energy transfer due to an under spine arrow plus underweight arrow, then there is no question asked. This is a void of warranty. It is important to use both the correct spine and correct weight arrows for your bow. But this is the sole responsibility of the archer. The arrow sellers, they don't care. Their job is to market to you, to persuade you to buy his arrows. Even if the arrow doesn't suit your bow, even if the arrow breaks your bow, for him, that's no problem. When the bow breaks, well, contact the bow seller. Contact the boyer. They should take responsibility. For him, the arrows that cause the problem is not his problem. It doesn't, he doesn't care. So you have to be very careful when you buy your arrows. You have to follow the boyer's or the uh, seller's specification. Whoever is going to warranty your bow, you have to listen to him, not the arrow seller. Be very careful with this. Now, I would like to share with you some of my past experiences when selling bow and arrows. So it used to be that when I sell bows, I would include all the specification of the arrows for that bow to the customers. So they have the full freedom to pick whichever brand, whichever seller that they like to buy the arrows as long as the arrows meet the, the specifications that are required. However, this backfires. Because the moment they receive the bow, or the moment they leave the shop, all that goes out the window. They just buy whichever arrow they can find, or whichever arrow is cheapest, or whichever arrow that their friend recommends. And when the bow breaks, I ask them what spine and weight are, you, they, are they using, it always comes in under spine and under weight. This is so frustrating to the point that I decided to, to create my own brand of arrows, which I call the Taurus Carbon Arrows. This is purely born out of being fed up 
with what is being sold by the market. The arrows that we offer is really simple. For the, there, there are five weight options. For the 600 spine, we have two weight options, like this. For the 500 spine, another two weight options, like this. And for the 400 spine, there's one weight option, like this. It is available in both 3 and 4 fletched. So this is 4 fletched. This is 3 fletched. And you can see based on the weight here, it is very easy to match with bows to create 10 grain per pound, 11 grain per pound, or 12 grain per pound. So we are able to cater to poundages 30, 35, 40, 45, and 50 pounds, which is the poundages that we usually sell. So initially, we included these arrows free with every bow purchase because we want to protect the bows that we sell. Since customers always give us the excuse that they couldn't find suitable arrows and therefore they use these uh, non-suitable non arrows. So now we include them free, they have no more excuse. They cannot argue that they cannot source for a suitable arrow anymore because the arrow that we give them free is well matched in spine to the, bow, the bow's poundage. It is also well matched in weight to the bow's poundage. The spine tolerance is very good, plus minus 20. The weight tolerance is fantastic at just plus minus 0 0.1 gram or 2 grains. It is uh, high front of center, so let me show you one of them. It is high front of center, so that it is extremely forgiving. Okay. Very, very forgiving arrow. It is extremely durable because this tip here, it is a deep tank design. So um, what shows up out here is actually very minimal. I keep it minimal. Everything is inside. That's why the front here is extremely strong. Uh, let me show you another one. This is actually the newer design. So the point is even smaller so that we have we can push more of the material inside creating a deeper tank so it is extremely strong when uh, upon frontal impact the fletchings uh, this is this is fairly interesting and uh, this is actually more of a recent development so these feathers here is uh, it's more of a historical design they have a flat top so uh, what I read was uh, traditionally the, or historically the feathers are as as high or as tall as the diameter of the arrow shaft and therefore I created this profile and uh, it actually shoots really really well so uh, I'm actually waiting one of my friend to to give me uh, some videos comparing the these fletches here against parabolic fletch but uh, I'll post a video sometime uh, when I when I get that so these arrows here are extremely affordable for three fletched 75 US dollar a dozen for four fletched 82 dollars a dozen so now there is absolutely no excuse that you cannot find a good arrow that suits the bow what is this we have these arrows if you are not able to source, that's your problem. 